Hi AP. Okay, today we are going to talk about uh, seventh chords and diatonic triads and seventh chords. So you already know by looking at this diagram, you already know the diatonic triads with the Roman numerals for major keys, right? One, minor two, minor three, major four, major five, minor six, diminished seventh, and major one for major. If we add a seventh on top of all of them, you will get this, diatonic seventh chords and a major key. So our major key is D major, and let's look at the Roman numerals that we have underneath each one. So our one chord in D major is a one major seven. We have a D, F sharp, A, C sharp. So we have a major triad and a major seventh, making it a major seventh chord. Our two chord in the key of D major for our seventh chord is a two seven. More specifically, a two minor seven because we have an E minor triad, E, G, B, and we have an E to a D, which is a minor seventh. Our three chord is a minor seventh, just like our two chord. We have F sharp, A, C sharp, which is a minor triad, and a minor seventh. Our four chord is like our one chord. It's a major seven. We have G, B, D, F sharp, major triad, major seventh. Our five chord is our major minor seventh, which is our dominant seventh. We can call that dominant seventh because of the five, the Roman numeral five. So here we're looking at a major triad and a minor seventh, A, C sharp, E, G. Our six chord is a six minor seven because we have a minor triad and a minor seventh. And finally, our seven chord is half diminished. See the slash through the circle. That's because we have a diminished triad, C sharp, E, G natural, and then we have a B as the seventh. C sharp to B is a minor seventh. Okay, so let's go over to here, and I can show you a little bit more about this before we continue. So we'll, we'll examine the diatonic seventh chords of the C major scale. So first we'll construct the scale, no key signature. Next, let's make snowmen with two bellies and we can analyze the resulting seventh chords. The first chord is C, E, G, B, making it a major seven chord. The second chord is D, F, A, C, making it a minor seventh chord. I'd like you to put the lowercase m next to that. The third chord is E, G, B, D, also a minor seventh. The fourth chord is like the first chord in that it is a major seventh.
The fifth chord is G, B, D, F. A major triad and a minor seventh. Therefore, it is a dominant seventh chord. And notice we have just the seven alone to indicate that. The sixth chord is A, C, E, G. So just like the two and the three, the six is also a minor seventh chord. And our seventh chord is B, D, F, A. B, D, F creates our diminished triad. And then from B to A, we have a minor seventh. Therefore, it is a half diminished seventh chord. So there's no fully diminished seventh chord for our diatonic major seventh chords. And finally, the eighth chord, right, is a repetition of the tonic seventh chord, C, E, G, B, making it a major seventh chord. So the first seventh chord of a major scale will always be a major seventh. The second and third seventh chords will always be minor sevenths. Okay, so now let's head back to here and proceed. So let's review quickly inversions of triads, which we're, we're really good at at this point. Root position, first inversion, second inversion. Note the chord symbols at the top above each of those chords. We have just a C if it's in root position. We have a C slash E, meaning that the piano player should play an E as the lowest note. And then for second inversion, we have a C slash G, meaning the piano player should play a C major triad with a G in the left hand bass. And here are our triads in root first, second position with full Arabic numerals, five, three, six, three, six, four, five, three and simplified, which we are all too familiar with at this point. If I page down slightly in the bottom right hand corner, you will see C major chord, root position, first inversion, second inversion. Okay, moving on. We have to talk about inversions of seventh chords. So take out some paper, Jot some items of interest down for us to study. We will look at the full Arabic numerals and also the simplified Arabic numerals or the abbreviated Arabic numerals. So for root position seventh chords, we have the figured base of seven, five, three, indicating that we need to draw notes of the intervals of a seventh above the lowest a fifth above the lowest, and a third above the lowest. And that will give us our root position seventh chord. Simplified, we just really see the seven. So if you see a seven in the figured base, that's a seventh chord in root position. If we head on over to the first inversion of seventh chords, our full Arabic numerals are six, five, three. Again, when you write these, or when you see these Arabic numerals, you will notice that the largest number is always on top, and the smallest number is always on the bottom, underneath. So we have a six, five, three for first inversion seventh chords. We'll need to memorize that. If you look carefully, all we have done here for the first inversion when we compare it to the root is moved the C one octave higher so that the third is now in the base. Just like triads, when we have a seventh chord that's in first inversion, the third is the lowest note.
And our figured base of 653 seems to make perfect sense because if we take the lowest note and we count up 6, that's where the root is. If we take the 5, we can go 5 above the lowest note, and that's where that note is. And if we take the 3 above the lowest note, that's where that note is. So we have a 653, that's first inversion, seventh chord. Let's take a look at this second inversion of seventh chords. Our Arabic numerals, full Arabic numerals, include 6, 4, 3. Second inversion, similar to just triads and inversion, means that the fifth is the lowest note. And our figured base symbols, 6, 4, 3, we can find above the lowest note. So there's our sixth above. Here's our fourth above. And here is our third above the lowest note. And you clearly see that the G is the fifth because we're dealing with a C seventh chord. So G is the fifth. Here's where things get a little interesting because now we have a third inversion because we're dealing with seventh chords. If it was just a triad, we would stop at two inversions, but now we have a third inversion because the, of the additional belly of the snowman, if you will. So for third inversion, if for first inversion, the third is the lowest note, for second inversion, the fifth is the lowest note, and for third inversion, you probably guessed it, the seventh is the lowest note. So our full Arabic numerals include a 6, 4, 2 for this. So clearly the lowest note right here is going to be the B. So a 6 up from the B would result in that note. A 4th above the lowest note would be placed there. And a 2nd above the lowest note is that note right there. And then we're back to root position with the 753. Okay, so we should be aware of the full Arabic numerals because they might help us at this point as we begin to construct seventh chords in inversion. But we also need to be aware for exams that most often they use the simplified versions, just like with triads. You know, we don't need to put 5-3 if it's root position. We can leave it blank. We don't need to put 6-3 if it's first inversion. More often than not, you'll just see a 6. So the simplified version, let's take a look at. <clears throat> the simplified version, what you see there, is all we really need to know in order to build the seventh chord. So for root position, instead of seeing 7-5-3, if we see just a 7, that indicates a seventh chord in root position. If we see a 6-5 and not a 6-5-3, it still means that it's going to be a first inversion seventh chord. You don't need the 3 here at all. They've taken it out. You should still write it in the chord, but it's not necessary for a simplified figured base. Here, in the second inversion seventh chord, it's not necessary to put the sixth. We can tell that it's in second inversion by just the four and the three. And for third inversion, 
Our full Arabic numerals are 642, but we will see just 42, which is the most common. Or sometimes you'll just see a 2, which is all we need to know for a triad or a seventh chord, excuse me, that's in third position. So it's important that we study these and memorize the full and simplified Arabic numerals for seventh chords in root position, first inversion, second inversion, and third inversion. If you look at the bottom left here, we have root position, E7 chord. It's called E. It's named E because E is the root. So here is my root position, seventh chord. We can probably figure out what type of seventh chord that is. That is a major triad and a minor seventh. So that's going to be our major minor seventh or our dominant seventh chord in root position. If I take the root and put it up one octave, the result is to the right of it, right here. First inversion. And I can count up from the lowest note, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. I've got a six, five, three. I don't need the three. So here the third is the lowest note. And it's similar to this example up here. Now what I can do is take the lowest note in the first inversion, which is the third, the G sharp, and I can move that up one octave. When I do that, the B becomes the lowest note right here, which is the fifth of our E7 chord. And I can write the figured bass in by counting up from the lowest note, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. The six is not needed. And this is similar to that example at the top, the second inversion seventh chord where the fifth is the lowest note. I can take it one step further, and I can take the fifth, this B, and I can put it up the octave here, and take it away from the bottom, and the result is a seventh chord in third inversion, which is right here. And you only really need the two of the figured base. to tell us that if it is a seventh chord <clears throat> with the seventh in the base. If we wanted to supply the full Arabic numerals, we can do so by counting up from the lowest note, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. And then one, two. But this is not needed. And that's very similar to that one up there. So for the seventh chords, you can easily remember the numbering for each type by the descending numerical scheme, which is located right here. Root position, seven. First inversion, six, five. Second inversion, four, three. Third inversion, four, two. I do like the four even though sometimes you see it just as a two. So seven, six, five, four, three, four, two.
AP, I'm going to move on to the next frame. So if you need to pause this video to finish copying down these notes, please do so. Otherwise, let's go on. So here is a figured base inversion symbol chart that shows us triads plus seventh chords, right? These three here are just triads. And here's where our seventh chords are. Note I'm in bass clef. So we have the picture of the notes. Underneath that, we have the complete figured bass symbol for triads in root position, first inversion, second inversion, and the complete figured bass symbols for triads, for seventh chords rather, in root position, first inversion, second inversion, and third inversion. In the row below that, we have the symbol that is most often seen, root position nothing, root position triad. First inversion triad, a six. Second inversion triad, six four. Remember, there is no abbreviation for that. You need the four to distinguish between the six. Moving on to seventh chords, the symbol most often used for root position seventh chords is the seven. First inversion, seventh chords, six five. Second inversion, seventh chords, four three. Third inversion, seventh chords, four two. And the last row shows you how to find the root. So for root position triads, it's the, ba the bass note. For first inversion triads, the sixth above the bass is the root. For second inversion triads, the fourth above the bass is the root. Moving on to seventh chords, for a seventh chord in root position, the seven indicates the bass note is the root. For first inversion seventh chords, the root is the sixth above the bass. And for second inversion seventh chords, the root is the fourth above the base. And for third inversion seventh chords, the root is the second above the base. Okay, we are going to move on to the next frame. So if you need to pause this video to finish copying down notes, you can do so. Otherwise, let's continue on. Okay, so here what we have to do is write the chords. So let's copy this down on staff paper and do this together. Let's look at the first one. Right away we can tell that the first one is not a seventh chord because we have 6-4 for the Arabic numerals, which you all know is a triad in second inversion. And it looks like they want the quality to be major. In the second example, we have a six in the figured base. So we know that to be a triad in first inversion. And they want the quality to be minor. In the third example, we have a triad with a six in the figured base. That's a first inversion triad with a quality of diminished. And the last example, we have an augmented symbol with no numbers indicating a root position augmented triad. So let's build these together now. Number one, we need a major six four. Let's count up six and count up four from the lowest note. 
and make the triad major. Figure out what your root is. Your root, it's easy to figure out. So our root, we can arrange them into two superimposed thirds like that. We cannot alter any of the given notes. So the F must be as is. How do we make this major? By supplying a B flat. Done. Next one, we need a minor triad in first inversion. If you count up sixth from the lowest note, that will be our root. What's missing? The C, of course. We need to make sure that that is indeed a minor triad, which it is, F, A flat, C. In the next example, we have a first inversion, diminished triad. Count up six from the lowest note, and we land on an E. We know the G to be the third, because it's first inversion. What's missing? The B. However, I don't think we're done yet, because this quality needs to be diminished. And right now, it's minor. So to make this quality diminished, we need a B flat. E, G, B flat. In the last example, we have a root position augmented triad. C sharp is our root. Let's build our snowman. C sharp, a major third above that, is an E sharp. And a major third above an E sharp would be a G double sharp. And we're done. Now, onto something a little bit harder and not as familiar to us. Let's look and examine the bass clef examples below. So these appear to be seventh chords, and we can tell right away they're seventh chords if we look at the figured bass numbers. The first one, we have a seven. That's an indicator that we need a seventh chord in root position. So I'll make myself a little note here root position. In the second one, we need a minor triad, I'm sorry, a minor seventh chord in first inversion because of the 6-5. So I'm going to make myself a note. Of course, I've memorized my inversions and my symbols for seventh chords. In the next one, we have a 4-3 in the figured base, indicating a 7th chord in the second inversion. And in the next one, we have a 4-2 in the figured base, indicating a 7th chord in third inversion. And finally, we have a 7 for the last one in the figured base, indicating a seventh chord in root position. Okay, so going back to the first chord, now that we figured out our root, first, second, third inversions for seventh chords, now we're going to go back and build these seventh chords. The first one is a root position seventh chord, and we need to make it major. It's a major seventh chord. So what we're going to do for major seventh chords in root position is do that. You recall that the full Arabic numerals for root position seventh chords is seven, five, three. So we have a seventh above the base, there it is. We have a fifth above the base, there it is. And a third above the base, like so. We need to make sure that the quality is a major major triad, B flat, D, F, good, and a major seventh from root to seventh, which indeed it is. Because remember, major seventh chords consist of a major triad and a major seventh. So we don't need to supply any accidentals next to the notes we've written in. And of course, as always, we do not want to change any of these given notes. For the next one, we have a minor triad 
in first inversion, a minor seventh chord in first inversion. So the first thing we should do is realize the six in the figured bass and count up six from the lowest note. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we should count up five from the lowest note. One, two, three, four, five. You recall that this is this six five is the abbreviated or simplified Arabic numerals, but for first inversion seventh chords, we're dealing with a full Arabic numeral of six five three. So we can count up three from the lowest note, which would place us right here. And now we have a seventh chord that is in first inversion. First inversion means that the third is in the bass. Okay. Now we need to make this a minor seventh chord without altering the E. So the E is the third. Let's do this. There's our root. There's our fifth. And there's our seventh. One, three, five, seven. How do we make this minor without changing the E, the given note? We need a C sharp to be the root. We need a G sharp to be the fifth. So we've just created our minor triad. Let's write in those accidentals. C sharp, G sharp. And this is a minor seventh chord. So we need a minor seventh from root to seventh. So we have a C sharp to a B. And we're done. In the next example, we have to build a major minor seventh chord in second inversion because of the four three in the bass. So first, let's get our tones written in. Count up four from the lowest note, and we land here. Count up three from the lowest note, and we land here. You'll recall that the full Arabic numerals for second inversion seventh chords would be a six four three. So let's count up six from the lowest note, and we land here. You should also now recall that we need a major minor seventh chord. That is also the dominant seventh chord, which means we have a major triad and then a minor seventh. So for second inversion, we know that the fifth is in the bass. So the C must be the fifth, which means that the E is the seventh, the A is the third, and the F is the root. So we already have a major triad, FAC. We need a minor seventh. So from F to E is a major seventh. Now we're making a minor seventh. So we're going to need to put an E flat right there. And I have just created a dominant seventh chord in second inversion. Moving on, we have a 4-2 in the figured base for the next example. You'll recall that the full Arabic numeral is 6-4-2. Let's plug in our tones. So a sixth above this, lowest note D, would land us here. A fourth above that lowest note would land us here. 
and a second above that note would land us right here. So that's what a third inversion seventh chord would look like. Now we need to make it diminished, but first we should find the root. Well, we know that the lowest note is the seventh. Seventh in the bass. And I should go back to the second inversion and write fifth in the bass. So our D is the seventh, which means our B will be the fifth. Our G will be the third, and our E will be the root. We cannot alter the D, because that's the given note. So you'll also recall <clears throat> that we need to build a fully diminished seventh chord, because it's just a diminished circle with no slash. And you should recall that in fully diminished seventh chords, we're dealing with minor third intervals between all of the notes, all the superimposed thirds. <clears throat> so D cannot be changed. D to B is a minor third. So we'll keep that as is. B to G is a major third. To make it a minor third, we have to contract it like so. Minor third. And a G sharp to an E is a major third. To make it a minor third, we'll have to raise up the E and make it E-sharp. Let's go back and plug in our accidentals. So we need an E-sharp, and we need a G-sharp. The B can be a B, and the D we cannot change. So we have just created an E-sharp, fully diminished seventh chord in third inversion. Interesting. For the last example, we have an A-sharp in the bass, and we have the number seven, which indicates that it's going to be a seventh chord in root position. They would like a half-diminished seventh chord. So it's root position. That's going to be the easiest one for us to build, like so. And now we need to recall the intervals that make up a half diminished seventh. First off, our triad must be diminished. So without changing the A sharp, I can go up to a C sharp for a minor third. C sharp to an E is a minor third. So I can leave the E as is. And the G would need to be raised to a G sharp because it's only half diminished and not fully diminished. Remember, half diminished, we have that major third interval here from fifth to seventh. So hopefully we're okay with writing seventh chords in first inversion, second inversion, third inversion, and certainly root position. Thanks for watching, AP. Have a great day.